to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Brian. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Ben Norris. <laughs> Our first round is headliners. Here is a picture of a major demonstration at Heathrow Airport this week. <laughs> but what does EPIH stand for? Empty Parachute Incident Horror. <laughs> Is it easy pegs? I'm high. <laughs> Could it be evil policeman inverts hippie? <laughs> Is it enter Poland insists Hitler? <laughs> no, it's more topical than that. <laughs> yeah. Elvis Presley in hiding. Yeah. <laughs> it's clearly none of those. Uh, so, for the sake of closure, would anyone like Is to take it? a guess? Is it that? environmental protesters invade Heathrow? That's exactly right. Well oh, done, well, Andy. Well, Yes, the answer I was looking for was environmental protesters invade Heathrow. This is the week-long Camp for Climate Action at the country's main airport, where up to 2,000 environmentalists are protesting against expansion plans. It's hilarious, isn't it? It's just like that they're doing indirect responses. One of the things they're doing is they're having a picnic to show those punks. It's just such an English... What are they going to do next? Just start playing cricket on the runway. <laughs> <laughs> invade a plane dressed as Morris dancers. Just, everybody off with a hey, no noddy nose. <laughs> If they wanted to throw Heathrow into chaos, they should do what everyone else does and book a flight. <laughs> I mean, there's always a camp of about 2,000 people at Heathrow. <laughs> it's just that normally they're waiting for their baggage yeah. to arrive. <laughs> they're they they so environmental, they've stolen two wheelie bins. But one from number 54 somewhere, they're going to Imagine if you're rushing out someone's wheelie, wheelie bin. bin. Yeah. <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote my number in Tipex. That's supposed to be, like, magic. <laughs> That's <laughs> supposed to be a huge... Once well, you write they... your number on it in Tipex, that's <laughs> the end of it. <laughs> they're saying this, don't they, that they're going to... The part of the, what they're trying to publicise is that the, the new runway will concrete over an area the size of Bromley. I think there'd be a lot more sympathy <laughs> if they concreted over Bromley. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing they're protesting over as well, isn't it, is this new Terminal 5 that's opening next year. And they're all saying, oh, the Terminal 5's been a massive success. You know, uh, it, they've got this delivery partner on board, it's all in budget, and they're saying because of this... The Olympics, they should have a delivery partner as well. And I'm thinking, well, if Terminal 5 is so fantastic, why don't we hold the Olympics there? You know? <laughs> it's got a massive bloody building, excellent transport links, and one hell of a long running track. <laughs> Do you think Terminal 5 will be like Channel 5, and for the first few years, not everyone will understand where it is? <laughs> <laughs> but they know if they ever get there, it'll just be tits and soccer. Yeah. <laughs> They got, an, they got an injunction, didn't they, on the Piccadilly line be, uh, to ban people from going to this camp. So the people who are going are sort of like bird watchers and people involved with the National Trust and things like that, and they're all banned. The only people now allowed on the tube are Combat 18 and Al-Qaeda. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, that's the thing, they're clearly not terrorists, and the police are using uh, laws brought in to deal with terrorists. It's just ridiculous. What do they genuinely think is going to happen? Just stand back! I swear to God I'll juggle. <laughs> you know, <that's... laughs> the most they're going to fling a hacky sack at their face. That's it. <laughs> For all the idea that it is a peaceful protest, uh, they are actually, according to the owners of the land, they're occupying the land illegally. illegally yeah. uh, I mean, if, if they were gypsies, they'd have been moved by now. Why, why are they allowing them to do it if they've all agreed that it's illegal? I, I, I've no idea, Daily Mail man. <laughs> uh, why, why, why the police haven't stepped in faster than that? Why, 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 why are the police being brought in to, to stare at them? <laughs> That's, that's a they little were bit gypsies. unfair. They'd have been moved <laughs> on by now. He's made a fair point. He's made a fair point. I say that in defence of gypsies. <laughs> if I was a gypsy, I'd be sitting there looking at us going, that's not fair. <laughs> and we don't even stand on our heads like twats. <laughs> Isn't the argument of the police that the camp will distract them from the business of looking for terrorists? Yes, I think I said. See, I'd, I'd like to think that the people whose job it is to look for terrorists are quite focused. <laughs> 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 I saw bombs in his suitcase, but someone was playing the levellers quite loudly. <laughs> Other than their work at Heathrow, how have the police been in the news this week? They're oh, lowering standards. They are apparently lowering standards, yes. And by, in what way are they lowering standards? It's they've decided that not enough people get the 60% pass mark required to be a policeman, yes. and so they've lowered the pass mark to 50%. 
because more people are getting that, yes. it being easier. One of the questions on the exam test was, wasn't it, if a policeman starts his shift at 1900 hours and it's a nine hour shift, what time does he finish? Now, if only one in two of police hopefuls can answer that question, it doesn't say much, does it? By the way, the answer is 28 hours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought it was people 19. are worried. People Just are worried about the police on the street. Presumably there are actually police on the street, but there would be more if they knew when their bloody shift actually finished. <laughs> <laughs> You're all knocking off going, oh, 1909. <laughs> <laughs> they're also complaining about 16-year-olds now being made communities of support officers, aren't they? Yeah, there are, no, there are only oh, two of them. Now, to be fair, there are just two 16-year-olds. Well, it keeps them off the streets, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if this is a disturbance at a cinema, but it's in an 18 certificate film. <laughs> so they'll turn and go, oh, Christ, right, stand on my shoulders, wear a big coat. Hello! <laughs> Imagine that, you know, oh, sir, you cannot drink and drive. You can't drink or drive. <laughs> <laughs> But there was so, a whole, there's a whole bit of coverage about how, how, mm. how ridiculous it is to have two 16-year-old community support officers who, can, who are allowed to confiscate drink but yeah. aren't legally allowed to drink it. As if this is a logical, you know, implausibility. I'd like to think generally the police don't confiscate drink and then immediately <laughs> yeah, drink it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really like a, a, as a general rule, they don't just go... Police are allowed... Find, I'd like that the law isn't finders, keepers, losers, <laughs> weepers. <laughs> I'd like to think that they do. I think that sort of makes them more human. If you imagine them just seizing a whole load of pornography and then just pissing off up the park. <laughs> <laughs> off the park? Off the park. Oh, oh, that's where you always find pornography. Is it? Who was reading porn under a hedge? <laughs> oh, I found the porn of a goblin. <laughs> Never goblin women, though. <laughs> it's always human women. Human always are human women that they wanted to look at those goblin. goblins. <laughs> Back off, goblin types. <laughs> the most amazing phone call to get off your mate when you're teenagers. I found goblin porn. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> what were you Morning, doing? So was he. Looking under a hedge. Shit. Were you just hoping to find porn? Were you? Or if I'm completely honest with you, Andy, yes. <laughs> 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 Aren't 16 year old police officers going to look like kissograms for paedophiles? <laughs> Presumably, these two 16 year old coppers yes. will wear their helmets backwards and their trousers just below their buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> I just am going, I was going to let you off because I've got to go in for tea, innit? <laughs> yes. Yes. Just chasing a car on Healy's, come back. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like you to accompany me to the station because I'm a bit frightened to go on my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never told them on Healy's, that's lovely. The first time I saw that, right, I was in a supermarket. It was just like, you know when you first saw just a kid going... <laughs> and this little girl, she's about five, and I was clearly had a <gasps> look and she just looked at me, age five, and went, I know. <laughs> 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 but they, they actually do have police on roller skates, don't they, on Hyde Park, right? And they, they actually had them. And then it found out that criminals could actually run across the grass and they couldn't follow them. <laughs> so yeah. things would be exactly the same, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. so they're given police trainers with little flashing blue lights in them. <laughs> <laughs> what are the criminals do in Hyde Park, anyway? What is there to do? Well, I think steal a truck. No, mainly it. pornography. <laughs> uh, I... <laughs> They're trying to lure goblin women into 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 <laughs> <laughs> niche pornography. Are there rollerblading police? They're rollerblading yeah. police. Not roller line. skating because they're line. not like some retro yeah. cop uh, <laughs> <laughs> with giant afros. <laughs> or... Yeah. Is that just the is that just the police's way of getting all the gay cops out of the station? Yeah, <laughs> uh, get some rollerblades. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to join Lycra Squad? At the end of that round, the boys go to Frankie Hewitt Man! <laughs> now we play a round called Mock Mock Who's There? <laughs> <laughs> this game involves Ben, Andy, Frankie, and Ed. So if you could make your way to the performance <clears throat> area, please. This is where we mm. test our performer's stand-up skills. We spin our news <coughs> generator, it settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is Britishness. Who wants to come in on that? Andy Parsons. <laughs> British people, we are accused of being reserved, but we can get excited, can't we? 
I saw a bloke on a train the other day, finished his Sudoku puzzle, and in front of the entire carriage, he went... <laughs> <laughs> Being able to put the numbers one to nine in the right order. <laughs> Who's the daddy? <laughs> We are also noted for our self-deprecation. Of course, only in Britain would we have a best-selling book entitled Crap Towns and then have to produce a second book, Crap Towns 2, <laughs> because too many British people had written in complaining that their town hadn't made the first book. <laughs> 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 Let's spin the wheel again. Uh, the subject is London. Who's going to come in on that? Ben Norris. London, uh, home of the Cockneys. Uh, if you're not sure if you are a Cockney, by the way, simply look down. If you're covered in buttons, you're a Cockney. <laughs> or a Sky Remote. <laughs> Either way, you're probably not working. Officially. Uh, <laughs> you've got to love the Cockneys. The eel's only natural predator. <laughs> that leaves us with Ed and Frankie. The next topic, please. The next topic is addiction. Who wants to come in? Ever. I actually, I actually gave up drink uh, f uh, for February uh, because uh, that's the shortest month. <laughs> and uh, I gave it up just to kind of show I could do it and just clean myself out. And uh, I, I was still smoking, though, which annoyed a lot of people. People were all like, what, you're not drinking, what, you're still smoking? Why don't you give up smoking? Smoking's worse for you than drinking. And I'm like, I've never gotten into a fight I couldn't possibly win because I've had a Marlboro Light too many. You know? <laughs> I did. I gave, and then I was on the phone to my dad, having given up drink for the month and feeling very proud of myself. And uh, I told him about it because uh, I like a drink. My dad loves a drink. His dad before him, like, uh, drinking runs in our nationality. <laughs> and he, <laughs> He was saying, when I told him I'd given it up for the month, he was like, oh, that's very interesting, because he'd read an article in this magazine. It was, it was basically a list of warning signs that mean you made me an alcoholic. It was stuff like, have you ever injured yourself and forgotten how? Have you ever missed work as a booze? Have you ever danced with raining men by the weather girls despite being a straight man? <laughs> Things like that. <laughs> but one of them was, do you occasionally give up drink for a month or so just to prove you can do it? <laughs> So I said, thanks for the heads up there, Dad. <laughs> I've never given up drink again. <laughs> I don't want people thinking I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> Ever. OK, let's see what the final topic is. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is reality television. I think with, uh, with Big Brother, they should make it more interactive. You know, press the red button now to release a tiger into the house. <laughs> Press it twice for a serial killer in a hockey mask. <laughs> Three times releases John Leslie. <laughs> I'll play a joke on them, you know, where they, they hear bombs going off in the distance. Helicopters going over the house, flames licking up around the fence. <laughs> then nothing for a few days. <laughs> and then on eviction night, Davina comes over the tannoy sounding terrified and speaking in Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> they said that people in India were burning effigies of Jade Goody, and they weren't. It turned out they were barbecuing a pig. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Frankie Royal. And for a second, it's Ben and Frankie. Our next round is called News Reel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask you to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features the Prince of Wales. Oh, someone should tell you, I've got a turkey on your head. <laughs> yeah, let go, let go, there's enough. Let, I'm, I'm the Prince of Wales, thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, I'm uh, looking for... Uh, where's my list? Um, <laughs> cheese, that's right. Do you, uh, do you, she told me to buy some cheese. Do you have uh, cheese? Any cheese? Uh, yes, we have cheese, sir. We have lots of cheese. What, what kind of cheese was it you were uh, after at all? Uh, do, what, do you know? I think I'm just looking for cheese. Uh, <laughs> is, that, uh, is that cheese? I've never actually <laughs> bought anything. Good morning. Do you, uh, do you have cheese? <laughs> I have cheese. 
Oh, there's cheese. I'm is, is, is there cheese? Is there, is there cheese? Is it those things? Is there cheese at all? No, that's an oyster, sir. Your <laughs> royal idiotness. That's uh, that's an oyster. Uh, does it uh, does it taste of cheese? Or... Oh God, do the charmers. I thought you were dead. I uh, <laughs> wish you were here. Ah, uh, wish I was king. Oh, uh, wish I had cheese. Ah, uh, no. Do you have cheese? You shiny faced man who's escaped from a cuckoo clock. Do you? Uh... Is it, is it cheese? Uh, no, this is ham, sir. That is ham there. That is, uh, does it, is it like cheese at all? <laughs> is, uh, cheese, I'm after, you see. Uh, no, that is a uh, ham, you see. That is a, that is a pig that's uh, been shot, you see. That's how that works. Uh, shot! Oh, yes, probably by my father. Yes. Mistook it for an immigrant. Yes, now, you can taste some of this uh, ham if you like, sir. Come over here, try that. Well, I like it. Well, it has magical properties, you see. You eat that, you go to a different part of the... Uh, of the space-time continuum. That's what uh, <laughs> happens there. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. Where's the cheese? Where's the cheese? Well done, you. This round is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories. Ben, which category would you like? Let's go politics. OK, your category <laughs> is politics. The answer is 10%. What is the question? Is this the pay rise that the firemen undoubtedly deserve on both their jobs? <laughs> <laughs> is it how much blood has Amy Winehouse got in her blood? <laughs> 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 Is it statistically, what are the chances of your wife leaving you for an albino? <laughs> They're a small portion of the population, but very, very compelling. They're very uh, highly sexed and charming. <laughs> <laughs> They've had to be just to survive. <laughs> what is the percentage of the population who believe that their food has a party when they shut the fridge door? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is it how many people die in midsummer every day? <laughs> yeah. Is it what proportion of our audience are unaware they've been abducted by aliens? <laughs> what is the pass mark for a grade A GCSE? <laughs> it's not. Do you know what the actual answer is? Is it what is Gordon Brown's current lead in the polls? Of course Yay. it is. Very <laughs> good. Yes, the question I was looking for is how big is Labour's lead over the Conservatives this week? This is the latest opinion poll that puts the government at 42%, a 10-point lead over the Conservatives, their biggest lead since before the Iraq war in 2003. The size of the margins leading to speculation that Gordon Brown will call an autumn election. I don't understand the whole Brown thing. You know, it just seems like even more totalitarian than Blair. He's got this idea now he wants to put listening devices into lampposts to fight terrorism. Is that how terrorists work? Come, we must discuss our evil plans in this brightly lit area. <laughs> we'll sing them out like a barbershop quartet. <laughs> all, all you'd hear would be the sounds of hundreds of ukuleles. He's all pro ID cards as well. Yeah. I, I was going through Edinburgh this week and there's a, a petition against ID cards. So that's people going. We've decided we don't want the government having information on us, so we're going to send them a list of our names and addresses. <laughs> well, the, the ID card thing, I just can't see how it's going to work, because there's a picture of me on my driving licence counterpart, and they're terrible, those pictures. If I got pulled over by the police, even an intelligent policeman would have to go... Yeah, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the November election thing, though, they aren't going to... Labour aren't going to go for a November election. They're 26 million in debt, right? And the reason they're 26 million in debt is they had all these loans given to them, didn't they? Which they hoped would turn into donations over a period of time. Then all this Lord thing sort of kicked up, and now they've got to repay all of these loans, so they're 26 million in debt. Obviously, who they need to talk to is Ocean Finance. Don't they? <laughs> you know, they need to consolidate all of their big loans <laughs> into one easily repayable loan. <laughs> And then for the New Year's Honours list, expect Sir Ocean Finance. <laughs> We've got crisis after crisis of crisis. Uh, Brown has looked 
he's, he's come out of it well. Like yeah. He's cooked older and more senior, whereas Cameron looks increasingly like, you know, the weapon to fight a previous war, the guy they need to get rid of Blair. And now he actually looks younger and younger, like his testicles are re-entering his body. <laughs> I mean, the more crises go on, it's like he, he looks, well, we blame the government, and then it looks like, oh, we blame the government. Uh, <laughs> and eventually they're going to go, what do you think about this? And he's just go, we're walking in the air. <laughs> He's still cycling to the Commons, but he's on a chopper. Yeah. <laughs> the Liberal Democrats say they want an election in 2009, don't they? So that it will coincide with Ming Campbell's 2009th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Why has Alex Salmond been in the news this week? Oh, he wants independence. No. I don't know that that should really have made the news, because he generally wants independence. Yeah, there's nothing particular. He, he launched a campaign for it, a proposal for it, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, well, I, I, I think it's great, it's great to have... Alex Salmond is our leader now because we, we really need a leader who looks Scottish. He looks like he's got the cholesterol levels of a fried egg. <laughs> he wants independence in 100 days because he's essentially got about 40 days before his blood turns into patty. <laughs> I think we should give the Scottish independence, then work out you've got oil and invade you all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they try and invade in Aberdeen on a Friday night. <laughs> Smart bombs, is it? If you're really smart, you'll walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I saw when I was. Do you know Aberdeen's uh, catchphrase is uh, the happiest place in the world? I saw something. In fact, I was doing a gig there. It was great. And there's a big shining smiley that goes, "Welcome to Aberdeen, the happiest place in the world." But I hadn't seen this. I just saw some man who was obviously a bit drunk just go, "Fuck you!" <laughs> I think, oh, he's swearing at an imaginary mate. But then you just look up at that. It's fantastic. It's, it's, great that that it's, it's unusual that you'd meet the mayor on your first night. <laughs> If Scotland, because Britain consists of Scotland, England, and Wales, so if Scotland did become and independent, Northern Ireland, no, 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 it doesn't. Ireland, UK, UK, no, no, okay, right. yeah, yeah. 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 Do you still want to own it though, don't you? You don't even know what it's part of. <laughs> but <laughs> you want it, even though you kind of don't yeah. know where to put it. Me, 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 grabby, 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 grabby. Of Great Britain. <laughs> All the green agenda comes out now, doesn't it? <laughs> Once you took the balance of two Irishmen on the panel, suddenly it turns into a nationalist show. Okay. Sorry. It, 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 Britain is, 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 is currently Scotland, England and Wales. So if, if, if Scotland was to leave and become independent, then it'd be just England and Wales, so you may as well just call it England. <laughs> this is just showing the tension. Scotland should have independent. The Scots hate the English. The Irish hate the English. The Welsh hate the English. And the English hate virtually everybody else, including most of the English. <laughs> All this from a country supposedly noted for its tolerance. <laughs> Maybe we are. Maybe we're the most tolerant country in the world, being able to live with so many people we can't bloody stand. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason Scotland doesn't have independence already is that we're just a sort of, like, bitterly negative nation. John Logie Baird invented the TV, and when people came up to congratulate him, he went, aye, but there's fuck all on. <laughs> Can you imagine flicking through the channels yeah. with his remote going, ah, Charlie, she's a bitch. <laughs> Another great inventor was Alexander Graham Bell. He was Scottish, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And people think that he invented the telephone, but apparently it was actually a French bloke called Elisha Gray who first invented the telephone, but he, he forgot to patent the idea. Can you imagine that? Six o'clock in the morning, uh, he's soldering on the last wire in his little Paris basement flat, and it rings. <laughs> <laughs> What am I wearing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never worked out if we did actually invent everything, Scottish people, if we're just a nation of bullshitters. <laughs> Motown, that was us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, I read somewhere the other day that the paperclip was never patented. I can't help but wonder if maybe the last couple of pages of the agreement went missing. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round of points, go to Russell Ed and Andy! <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way over to the performance area, please. <clears throat> I called ideas for scenarios we'd love to see in the performers come in with their suggestions. <clears throat> OK, here we go. The first subject is... Weird things to see on a road sign. Fancy a shack? Park and ride, 200 yards. <laughs> Stop! Hammer tape! 
<laughs> you are leaving Croydon. Well done. <laughs> Help me, I'm trapped in a sign making factory. <laughs> When the red lights are flashing, get down with the groove. <laughs> Accident on opposite carriageway. Quick, look! <laughs> Amarillo, this way. <laughs> you are now leaving trowel services. Wish you hadn't eaten that for 26 miles. <laughs> If you can read this, you've crashed into my front garden. <laughs> you are entering Scotland. No salad for 200 miles. <laughs> no left turn, no right turn, no entry, no reversing. Get out of the car and put your hands on your head. <laughs> Do it! <laughs> River ahead, which your sat-nav thinks is a road. <laughs> You're lonely, aren't you, Russell? <laughs> <laughs> Sharp left turn ahead. Careful, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Giant exclamation mark! Ahead! <laughs> <laughs> Bracknell, twinned with hell. <laughs> Warning, little chef, one mile. <laughs> Next up again, unlikely things to hear in the House of Lords. Would anyone like to swap a packet of Space Raiders for some Dairy Lee Dunkables? <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome our newest member, Lord Voldemort. <laughs> I used to be a lord, but after the operation, I'm a lady. <laughs> that, uh, gentlemen, is the motion. And now I will clear it up. <laughs> I want to recriminalise homosexuality so that I can feel dirty when I do it. <laughs> I've changed my name to E Lordy. I want you all to call me Lordy Lordy. <laughs> I am the Lord of the Dance. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Lord Ocean Finance. <laughs> As a life peer, I would like to tender my resignation. <laughs> <laughs> this is Davina. You are live in the house. <laughs> Please don't swear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have that round of applause. Thank you, you and Dan. <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Ben Norris. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Russell Howard. Right. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Darby. See you next week. Good night. Don't move. Keep it comedy with BBC Two blasting off with a new super weapon. The crew are back with hyperdrive. Then Jack and Victor in court and seeking compensation. Still game here at 10. And why not download Russell Howard's podcast now at bbc.co.uk slash 6music. <laughs>